Good day, dear listeners. Steve Breda here with the Management Blueprint Podcast. And today my guest is Scott Absher, the co-founder and CEO of Shift Pixie, a company syncing work opportunities from job providers with the open time slots of available shift workers. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Good to be with you. Well, um, it's uh, it's an exciting uh, it's going to be an exciting conversation because you uh, have developed uh, an interesting application that I've not heard about before and that uh, could uh, be a great framework for a lot of businesses that that need uh, uh, the shift workers that we are talking about. So, so before we talk about your framework, let's just uh, talk a little bit about your background and how Shift Pixie come about and how did you land in the CEO job. Sure. Uh, I had an unusual uh, background in that I, uh, I uh, uh, kind of grew up in the human capital management space uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, early 90s, uh, kind of started uh, at the same time. Uh, I was a, a technology hobbyist. Uh, I wrote code and, and used to uh, uh, design uh, technology. Uh, it kind of is a hobby, and then that morphed into uh, uh, a part of my career. Uh, and then there there came a time where those two uh, passions kind of collided. Um, back in uh, uh, 2015, um, I uh, was approached by my uh, co-founder uh, about a problem that he was seeing uh, in his part of the uh, human capital management uh, world. And in his particular part of the world, uh, he focused on uh, part-time labor-driven uh, 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 industries. And, and in particular for him, it was fast food, uh, chain fast food restaurants and, and pizza operators. And what he uh, was uh, fielding from his clients was a problem that um, he'd never uh, asked for their help on. And it was uh, about finding people. And what he uh, learned was that... Um, uh, in that in that tradition, especially with restaurants or actually any industry that relied heavily on part time labor, the tradition was uh, you could expect 100 percent turnover. So somebody that started in December would or January would likely not be there in December. And uh, when you when you're charged with handling the human capital, uh, that means all these onboarding and offboarding uh, uh, exits and that sort of thing. You have to handle the paperwork, documentation, administration for it. It's hard to make money with any group that has high part uh, part time labor uh, concentrations. But um, the question that he was being asked uh, and can you help me find people? It was kind of made on an assumption that he was working with so many restaurant operators that he'd have a population, but that's not the way the business, the industry worked at the time. And uh, what uh, we came to learn later, uh, you know, it was uh, that the uh, tradition of 100% uh, turnover had actually escalated to three and 400%. And uh, when, when we looked at that, also uh, learned that the uh, attribution for that was that now all of uh, these uh, from 2015 on because of uh, smartphone adoption that all of a sudden a lot of different gig uh, platforms and opportunities started to emerge that were uh, creating new opportunities and, and, and uh, appealing to this uh, uh, fixed uh, <laughs> uh, part-time workforce in the U.S. in particular. So all of a sudden now the brick and mortar guys, uh, all these operators were now struggling to try and keep a, a, a full bench. And uh, that was that was really the problem that we uh, j uh, merged into uh, trying to fix. Uh -huh. So you basically have to respond, you had to respond to the challenge of the gig um, yes. economy emerging and how did you actually play in the gig economy so that right. you don't uh, lose out to other people who provide the flexibility. That's that right. That is uh, uh, fascinating. So, so let's talk about the framework that uh, you know that pertains to this topic, which I think we call it the load balancing framework. So, what does it mean, load balancing, and how do the you know these companies that need shift workers, how do they come together with these uh, mostly unqualified, unqualified shift workers sure. who look for opportunities? Well, it starts in our particular case that, uh, uh, you know, load balancing is not a new concept. Uh, it's been used in technology for a long time and engineering for a long time, but never really in human capital. 
Uh, and what we've learned in in uh, in our work in the, in the the industry since 2015 is that um, it's not just these industries uh, like I described restaurant and hospitality that rely on part time labor. Uh, really, the Fortune 1000 relies on even <coughs> a contingent uh, side of the uh, workforce, <coughs> where they they're actually. Uh, it, uh, extremely reliant on having uh, 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 this workforce that can kind of fill in uh, around the edges that's not part of their fixed overhead to make sure that their business keeps moving forward. You can imagine that being somebody like a an e-commerce company that has to gear up uh, around the holidays because, uh, you know, gift, uh, gift uh, uh, purchasing is going up. Uh, could be uh, 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 other seasonal aspects of their business uh, could be uh, people that are in, um, uh, say, a seasonal food processing operation where they have a surge at, at particular points in time where they've got to uh, access human capital. And, and the load balancing concept for us is that our platform would allow these types of, of uh, employers, these types of customers to have a ready bench that they can access and deploy to work. So that the idea is that they don't have to worry about these imbalances of, of human capital that on a platform like ShiftPixie, they could actually access uh, a, na a nationwide workforce and fix problems in any part of the market they wanted uh, that they needed to and do so compliantly and that that's uh, the big contrast between what we do in the gig and uh, the gig county platforms these are treated as as w2 employees on our platform mm -hmm. so how do these people even know what they need to do so they they show up they get pulled in there is a, maybe it's a season imbalance there's a holiday season and i don't know amazon pulls these people in Sure. How can they be deployed uh, this fast without any training, or do they get training as well? Well, you got to remember that a lot of these jobs, especially the ones that we're focused around in the part time, these are non skilled jobs. These are not like a, accounting, uh, you know, finance professionals, engineering professionals, et cetera. We're really focused on people that, that are, do, are doing labor. They're lifting boxes, they're packing boxes, they're loading trucks, they're flipping burgers. All, all things with, uh, you know, very low skill levels, but uh, the st work that still needs to be done. The idea is that that um, if I'm, let's uh, let's uh, think of, about finding ourselves in a planning meeting and we're a big box retailer. Um, and uh, we just learned that uh, we're opening a, a new distribution center in Biloxi, Mississippi. And... Um, uh, and and all of a sudden, if I'm in charge of human capital, I'm starting thinking Biloxi, Biloxi. Who do I know? One of the things that we ran into as we were building our our uh, our platform, we learned that very large companies um, uh, have the way they they fix their content or, or or manage their contingent workforce is with uh, distributed relationships around the country. So when Biloxi would come up, they'd say, Oh no, I don't have. A, a, a temporary worker pool or a relationship in Biloxi, I need to find one and also manage that. Um, in, in our ecosystem, you could actually uh, pull up your phone and get real-time business intelligence. And, and when the, the idea of Biloxi comes up, you can actually go into Biloxi and see how many people are in our workers population. You can see what they've done, what skills they've done, what their average hour, hourly wage has been on our platform. And you can communicate with them directly. You can open up an opportunity uh, for them to go to work. So that's where this idea of load balancing comes in, where I've got an imbalance. I can go in there and I can uh, with with uh, real time business intelligence and my own my my own smartphone. I can I can do my own load balancing and to take that a step, uh, that concept a step up further, Steve, uh, we're uh, employing behind the scenes a lot of A.I., uh, to kind of manage those workflows that would traditionally be managed by people, uh, uh, which might be a friction point. Somebody may forget to do something or didn't get it done or, or has to uh, a repeated task over and over again, whether it's a phone call, a text, an email. Uh, our AI actually uh, intervenes and actually continues the conversation, continues the momentum and keeps people in motion. And um, uh, to the extent that uh, we're applying this to the load balancing concept, it's it becomes more of an automatic function rather than a semi-automatic uh, function. So, so that is this task management that keeps people in motion, or is it, you know, yeah, it task, 
Yeah, it, well, if you think about it, uh, even in hiring, there's there's task management. Number one, I've got to locate a, a pool of candidates. Uh, number two, I got to screen the candidates. Uh, task two is screening them for their capabilities and and their uh, geographic fit. Uh, third thing is a uh, third task is I've got to do outreach. I've got to once I've uh, I've decided who I'm going to call. I got to I got to do outreach now. And that outreach becomes a task, uh, a repetitive task on its own. One conversation uh, to to get to uh, one person, it may take uh, many calls, many attempts, many missed opportunities, many misconnections. Uh, the rule of thumb in, in the staffing world is that uh, for every one position that you uh, have open or every shift opportunity you have to have open, uh, you're gonna have to have 10 candidates uh, that you're pursuing to get that one filled. That shows you how how uh, the fill rate is is pretty narrow, and so with technology, all those workflow steps that I described, those those tasks and that task management process, all becomes the realm of uh, the artificial intelligence. The robot actually does it for you. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So, what's the psychographics of the the population of shift workers who are working through a platform like this, as opposed to trying to get a job or or finding work in other ways you know that the, that the psychographic for that for that uh, population has not changed too much you're going to find in that population that it, it would start as early as kids in high school that uh, you know need to make money uh, to, to pay to pay their bills and to pay for their fun uh, that's that's part of the early stage of the of the uh, the population then even in college, you know, you've got a, a lot of people that are working their way through college and they need flexibility and they generally uh, uh, gravitate to uh, one or one or more part time jobs. And obviously today it's much easier with the, all the, the platforms we talked about. Uh, but then uh, even in uh, people that are in transition, maybe they're. Uh, they're uh, transitioning out. Maybe the, the company that they uh, work for uh, uh, went through a series of layoffs. They still got to keep uh, food on the table and they, they'll uh, they'll pursue some of these types of opportunities. And it could also be people in retirement. What's uh, one of the, the, uh, the crunch points now that I think you're going to start hearing a lot more of is there are a lot of people that are retired from uh, that that are now um, in a in a financial pinch because their retirement income isn't quite making uh, you know paying the bills, and so you're going to start seeing a larger and larger percentage of that population pursuing these types of part time opportunities. They're probably not not in a position or not not uh, interested in, in jumping into another full time job, but they like the idea of being flexible, moving from one part time opportunity to the other. So it. It's a pretty wide range in that in the, of of of, of uh, uh, people and and positions in life that that make up that psychographic. What about the demand side? So is it just big companies that can afford to do this? Who who basically have a volume of positions to fill, and if some people don't show up, it doesn't matter because they overbook. Or even small uh, to small to medium sized businesses could do this for particular positions, one or two positions here and there. Could they reliably use the system? Yeah, they could, uh, and it, and we're, and it, the way it sets up, uh, it, it aligns with kind of the market demand. So, uh, what we're we're trying to provide that real time business intelligence and the ability to do things nationally with a single source at scale to appeal to the large uh, buyers. We have we have several large uh, uh, national accounts that are starting to roll onto our platform, and um, and there, there's a big appeal for them. But by contrast, on the other side of the market, you've got some smaller companies that like to stay agile, like to stay nimble, and they uh, and they do project work. It might be uh, it might be somebody that does home remodeling, might be somebody that does uh, seasonal work, uh, might be uh, somebody that uh, does. Um, uh, we have we have some clients that do uh, uh, exhibition work. In other words, they they uh, when a trade show opens up, they're in there and they and they staff it, they uh, they they uh, put it up, they break it down, but they don't. That's not regular work. So there's a there's a large number of those types of uh, of companies that can benefit again by having a single relationship. They can they can tent up in any market they want and have access to a real time workforce. That's cool. That's cool. So basically, it's it's like an Uber for uh, for unskilled labor. Uh, if you uh, have some time <laughs> that you want to sell, basically you want to some income and you want the flexibility, you jump on and see what's available. 
and companies are uh, essentially when they need someone urgently for a short time they can jump on now when you use ai on this platform to create this load balancing what are the kind what is the mechanics of of what the ai does so so how does this automatic load balancing even work so what we do on the front side and the user experience for um, uh, somebody that was coming in as a shift worker, the they're, they're, it, it's really a chatbot interface. <clears throat> so they don't really recognize that they're they're chatting with the AI, but uh, the the conversation and the the uh, the coalescing, the the coercion in some cases, all that all those things that uh, you need to move and motivate somebody through a process is all being run by AI. But on the back side, the AI is doing another uh, very interesting thing. And what it's doing is it's looking at all the schedules and all the openings. And uh, and as it's uh, monitoring and managing uh, the schedule openings, if somebody decides they're not going to show up on our platform, they would just check out. They just say, I can't make it today. And what the AI automatically does is notify whoever's managing that ship that, hey, you've got an opening now and here are your options. Your, uh, your A options are people from your home team that are already, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, already working and already on the payroll. Uh, but these are ones that are, here's the ones that are not working. Do you wanna d uh, do an out call to them? Second, um, it, it would, uh, in our uh, ecosystem, it's checking for overtime risk because that's the, the problem is somebody steps out, somebody comes in, am I gonna be, be, be uh, paying overtime? So it's, it's looking at that part of the load. But then it's also it has a larger population option where it can look at the population that's locally available uh, to that same uh, shift operator and say, do you want to open uh, the shift up for uh, uh, one of these people in, in the population? Uh, the the way it's set up, it's and I call it semi-automatic in, 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 in that it's uh, capturing the, uh, the incident, uh, showing you your options, and then asking you to select. Uh, it's really set up in such a way that it can be done automatically. Once uh, the the shift uh, operator uh, comes to understand that, uh, and, and the AI gets to learn their preferences, it'll automatically make those out calls and automatically do that research uh, or the outreach to fill those shift gaps. So that's 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 where on the backside is where you see more of the load balancing. That is fascinating. Uh, what happens when uh, you know you said it because it's a demand and supply uh, kind of game so if there is low supply is there surge like with uber that uh, that wages surge and then uh, you try to attract more workers by raising uh, temporarily the wages that are available well what what the way our system works and and that's a good a good question fair question what what happens is that people are, are uh, kind of rated in our system as they as they travel. And uh, what you're going to find is that uh, if somebody is at uh, an overtime risk, but they're available. So as an example, in California, anything over uh, eight hours is uh, overtime. Uh, anything over 40 hours is overtime. So uh, if if uh, somebody is available and maybe they want to take some extra work, they but they've worked 40 hours for somebody else for the week, um, they have an opportunity to do so. And then our, on our platform, they'd actually do it at a premium. If they're available, they'd be, be presented at that overtime premium, um, and, and which is a good thing. You know, they're a good worker. They're getting a lot of hours. They're in demand. Um, there, there's uh, also some opportunities for uh, the uh, business operator to provide some incentives in there. In other words, they can say where they might normally be paying uh, fifteen dollars an hour. Maybe they're in, maybe they're uh, happy to pay eighteen dollars an hour or twenty dollars an hour to cover that shift because they need the help. So it gives them a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, of um, of uh, 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 when a surge happens, they they can see what their options are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically it's driven by or controlled by the employer rather than the employee. That's right. Uh, that makes that makes sense. That's kind of different from. Uh, um, you know, platform like a freelance platform like Upwork, where it's the employee or the worker that controls the price rather than uh, the than the hiring employer. That's a really interesting dynamic. So, Scott, um, if you know, if some of the listeners they run a small business or medium sized business and they they want to tap into this resource, uh, where can they go? And also, if they want to reach out to you, how can they find you? 
You can find me at uh, shiftpixie.com. That's shift like in shift work, P I X Y dot com. Um, uh, you can uh, always post on our, our, our marketing uh, uh, website there that if you've got an issue or you'd like to uh, get to know us, you can certainly ping us there. Okay, fantastic. Well, definitely do a check out Scott uh, Absher's company, uh, Shift Pixie. He's also on LinkedIn if you want to reach out to him. And uh, and also make sure you check out our YouTube channel uh, because we are there and uh, the YouTube channel is growing. So check check us out. We also have uh, published shorts of every episode. So if you just want the framework or the very essence of the episode, just go there and you you can watch those engaging videos as well. So Scott, thank you for joining me today on the show. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, business and it's amazing that now these platforms cover all types of work and uh, it, it also gives people a lot of opportunity to, to, to work wherever they want to work and whenever they have spare capacity. I think that's wonderful that this can be mobilized and, uh, and, and used. So it's thanks awesome. uh, yep. and uh, you know, let's talk soon. It sounds good, my pleasure. Good to be with you.